13 year old out there, Greg. Oh, it's too hard. He's good. He's getting ready to be a bachelor for a week, so he's a happy guy. Yeah. At least tomorrow morning. I think I'm racing. Yeah, he's going to autocross um, Saturday. He is going? Yeah. Um, he's going to drive the race car down there, and he's going to take his helmet. He's not going to drive his race car. He's going to ride with another guy, and the other guy might drive his race car. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission. Um, and I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, and we will begin with a roll call, please, Jackie. Commissioner Newman? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Welch? Here. Commissioner Westman? Co uh, Chairperson Story? Here. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So before we begin on the agenda, I do want to announce that uh, this meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications cable TV channel 8 and AT&T U-verse channel 99. It's being recorded tonight and will be replayed uh, next Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed on the city's website in real time at www.cityofcapitola.org and tonight our technician is Lynn Dutton. Um, and also, as a reminder, if everyone could please make sure your cell phones are turned off. Um, so next uh, on the agenda, we'll go to oral communications, and the first item is additions and deletions to the agenda. Do commissioners want to request any additions or deletions? Seeing none, staff? No additions or deletions. Okay. Um, uh, next on the agenda are public comments. It's an opportunity for members of the public to address the uh, commission on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Does anybody want to speak to us on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on uh, to commission comments. Anybody got any announcements, updates? And um, Okay, seeing none, well, let's move to staff comments. Uh, I should announce that there was an appeal for the 205 Magellan, and that will be heard on uh, September 27th by the City Council. Thank you, Katie. Um, next, we'll move to uh, the approval of the minutes of the Planning Commission regular meeting of June the 7th, 2018. Um, are there any requested changes? And if not, a motion to approve. Uh, Chairperson, I have a, a, a change uh, on page 18. It's talking about, um, uh, it's the minutes about the retail uh, marijuana sales. And it mentions that Commissioner Welch has uh, some thoughts and concerns. I'd like to just have those stated what they are. So I gave uh, uh, the comments written down so they could put those in there. Basically, it's just, discusses what I stated at the meeting that uh, based on the studies in Colorado and Washington uh, cannabis sales gonna ha may have a negative impact on our community and I don't believe our law enforcement is uh, staffed um, to handle the prob potential problem so I just wanted that included yeah. in the minutes yeah well thank you um, and uh, the other commissioners, how would you like to handle this item? You want to approve the minutes with the addition that TJ has mentioned? 
um, or wait for the actual uh, draft minutes to come back? I would move approval um, with the changes that TJ's recommended. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Which brings us to the consent calendar uh, for this evening. Uh, consent items will be handled with one vote uh, unless anyone uh, requests that it be removed from the consent uh, agenda for further discussions. Do commissioners wish to pull a consent item? There's only one, so. Is there none? Do any members of the public wish to pull a consent item for further discussion? Seeing none, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Also move. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Oh, we have one abstention, so the motion is uh, 3 to 0 with one abstention. Due to uh, having property within the 500 months radius okay congratulations yes um, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the agenda <laughs> well, <laughs> so which will bring us to uh, public hearings for the evening we have one uh, public hearing this is concerning 1816 Wharf Road this is an application for our coastal development permit and variance uh, to decrease the setback from the riparian corridor, i.e. Soquel Creek, for a, a pin pile retaining wall located within the um, ARRR1 ESHA um, zoning district. Uh, with that, we'll begin with a staff report. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair Story, and good evening, Commissioners. Um, before you this evening is a coastal development permit with a variance for a new pin pile wall at 1816 Wharf Road. I should clarify that the staff report that you read was written by our new staff member, Sasha Landry, but I'm presenting tonight because many questions have come up and the technicality of this. So, um, but that was her fine work in the report. Um, quick overview, the riparian corridor is shown in this image in green um, and from the riparian corridor, there's a 35-foot setback for development. When the home was developed, the home received a variance for the setback requirements from for 15 to 20 feet, um, a 15 to 20 foot variation for the setbacks. There was permitted a existing a retaining wall right at the edge of the riparian corridor, and so one thing I want to clarify is that this application. Um, in our initial analysis, thought it was one foot within the 35-foot setback. It's actually right on the edge of the riparian corridor. In the previous staff reports from 07, it states that the wall was going to be within a couple feet of the riparian corridor. So by placing this wall just directly inside the other wall, we can pretty much assume it's at the zero setback line to a one-foot setback line. Um, and being out on this site, so much sloughing has taken place in front of the wall that it doesn't seem to be much of a habitat area right along the wall. But there is one native tree that's maybe five feet in from the wall. So we can assume that the riparian corridor, actually the, the owner did follow up with a biologist when this application first came in to ask if the riparian corridor uh, limits had changed since the 07 and they said no due to that native species tree being so close to the wall. So um, so here are some images of the sloughing that's occurred. There was, uh, as we all know, large rainstorms two years ago that caused this problem and the existing wall has now been undermined and in need of repair. Um, the what the applicant is proposing is a pin pile wall and it'll be located just outside the existing retaining wall. Um, in here you can see the pin piles, the pins themselves are located five feet apart from one another and they're quite substantial pins that go into the ground. I think it was 28 feet, so, or 30, 32, 32 feet, thank you. Um, 
This image shows there is a similar pin pile wall on the neighboring property 1810 Wharf Road, and it was just put in a few weeks ago. Oops, sorry. Um, and so the image on the left is at 1810 Wharf Road, and this is essentially what it will look like with the pins um, going into the ground, the 32 feet. And um, on the right is 1816 Wharf Road, the area that's failing. And I've just highlighted the area of the future pin pile wall. And it'll actually um, line up similar to the property at 1810 Wharf Road. And the engineer that is here this evening, I believe, designed those plans as well next I door. Those are plans on the geotechnical engineer. Or right ge oh, OK. OK. Um, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> So here's a, an image from the side showing the existing residence and the slope going down the hill um, and how the pin piles go into the ground 32 feet. And you can see there's an intermediate retaining wall that's placed between the piles that, that goes five feet deep. Um, and this area up here is where the existing wall is today. Um, the applicant is requesting a variance because they're within the 35 foot setback. The unique circumstances tied to this lot is that it's extremely steep um, and the, it necessitates the wall being just outside the existing wall. So therefore it has to get closer to that, um, the edge of the riparian corridor. A grant of special privileges, there's been um, numerous walls actually for retaining Down Wharf Road. A lot of the previous applications actually didn't require a variance for being located in the riparian corridor, but going back and looking at the applications, they probably should have because they were so close to the riparian area. So um, there are quite a few circumstances on Wharf Road that um, 1840 and 1850 Wharf Road, which are more similar um, to this property in that the lot isn't that doesn't have much depth before it comes to the river or to the stream. So, uh, so in reviewing this application, um, I've listed additional conditions that should be added to this permit. Some questions came up um, from Commissioner Smith asking, "How do we make? Sh how do we ensure that all the conditions placed in the um, geol?" Uh, the geological reports are um, enforced when the wall is built. So we've added conditions, and many of these are actually from the first time um, back in 07 permit when the first wall was um, brought in. The other is that a condition has been added for drainage from the house shall be directed away from the slope and towards Wharf Road. That was in the staff report and a requirement of public works. and. Um, was not in the conditions so that that's also been added and that um, but the, the rest of the conditions speak to making sure the geotechnical consultants um, and all the plans are followed as recommended within the reports so with that staff is recommending approval of the application for the pin pile wall based on the findings and conditions of approval and the conditions as amended um, the owner is here this evening, and she also has uh, her specialist here who um, can speak on the matter. And this one is very technical, so any real technical questions, I'd defer to them. But I'm happy to answer any questions you have. It, maybe the uh, Mr. Cooper will. Is that it, Mr. Cooper? Yes. We'll be, we'll be able to answer this when you have a chance. We wait till you get up there so you, everyone can see you at home. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But um, would it be a geologist that approves the report or the geotechnical engineer? It's the geotechnical engineer. I was noticing that on the <coughs> second one. I, I'm not clear that we have a geologist involved here. We have a geotech. I, I think that needs to be fixed on condition number two. Is this a question for me? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other questions uh, from commissioners on the staff report? One other question, the, the drainage from the house being directed away, the, the requirement of public works, is that during construction or is that permanent? I believe that's permanent, but they, um, they did, 
in the backyard, there is drainage set up that's going to filter. Um, actually, from the backyard, it goes down directly behind the new wall, and then there's um, an area in which it goes back into the backyard. So I'd, if, if we could build in some flexibility with that first, th that it meet the requirements of public works would be better, because um, I, I don't think it's exactly <coughs> how the public yeah. works yeah, a, department wanted yeah, that. So. A further on that question, because um, I, I went and visited uh, the site, and I noticed as the catchment um, that leads out over uh, the embankment and toward the creek, and the plans show uh, that um, the drainage would be going out in that direction. So I'm not sure how this condition is going to be met with without some sort of pump up, because it is sloped down in that direction. Yes, I think we should. Um, I, I'd like if, if we could have an amendment to that first um, condition that it, the drainage meet the requirements of public works because they, they have reviewed <coughs> these plans when they were modified and brought back in. That was one of the questions that came up from Arkansas. And once these plans came in, they were okay with the way it was draining. So um, I think it would be best. I think at first they, they were requesting that it be drained towards Wharf Road, but once they saw the plans and the existing drainage, they were okay with it draining at least back onto their property. So sorry for the confusion on that one. Um, you, no, that's fine, and thanks for that clarification. But I would, are, are there going to be, will Public Works be adding uh, requirements so that um, it's not contributing to the erosion on that slope? In other words, piping it all the way down to the river instead of just letting it run off uh, onto the slope? I believe they want it to run off onto the slope they because do. it, uh, for stormwater purposes, you don't want it to go directly into the river. You actually want to try to um, have some of it be absorbed into the the ground but I, I I can check with them but I know um, they weren't satisfied with the plans the first time they came through and then upon the second review they were happy with them and I'm not sure if there's any engineering from where the water comes out and maybe catches it so that it goes deeper into the ground at that point but I, I can make sure it um, satisfies their conditions or their requirements for groundwater thank you any other questions on the staff report um, um, and I did have a question, um, and maybe uh, when you do your presentation you could address it, but I'm just, um, how is this work going to be accomplished, uh, because it's a, it's a small area, um, how exactly are they going to get in there and dig these deep, um, you know, um, holes in the ground uh, for the piles? So. Do you know that um, already? or I know that there's a push to get the permitting approved as soon as possible. We tried to get this to hearing as soon as possible because of the, um, the development next door. They're, I don't think they're expecting to pour their foundation for about four weeks. Uh -huh. In speaking with the applicant, um, we can issue a proceed at your own risk tomorrow to get building plans in and reviewed. They get reviewed by a third party because of, mm -hmm. of the engineering aspect of this. And hopefully after the two-week appeal period is finished, we'll have the plans have been reviewed and she could start with her contractor at that point. And hopefully the neighbor would be amenable to allowing her to utilize So access. gaining access yeah, from that, that that's vacant the hope, lot. That, so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Was, um, with that, um, I'll uh, maybe open it up to the ac applicant to... Um, Joanne Kisling, and I don't have a lot more to add except that, you know, this project is very important because the, the slope is so steep and further erosion could threaten the house. The reason that, that we're doing this is that um, the current wall has been breached by the slide. So it, it really needs to happen in order to protect the house and as quickly as possible, hopefully, to be able to take advantage of access through the neighbor's yard, which he has agreed to, um, assuming he hasn't started to pour his own foundation and that kind of thing, which would become a problem. Um, 
And then the only other thing that maybe I should address is the drainage was designed to not erode the cliff. <coughs> the, the, the piping goes down far enough to be below where there's um, loose soil and that's the intention of it. And the whole property is sloped, so, I mean, this is a question for Public Works, but um, all the water is gonna wanna go towards the creek, whether it's underground or above ground, so that's why we built, it's a pretty robust drainage system as it is. So it's, it's in the spirit of trying to prevent any further problems for the, for the biology of the area as well as the property, okay? Any other questions? I, I had one. There, I read in one of the letters there was a reference to um, landscaping, but I didn't see any landscaping plan, but I just wonder what, what was being thought of in terms, is it just going to let the natural no. vegetation grow or, or no. are the things put in? Well, we had to remove, there was nice native landscaping um, already, but we had to take all that out because without a new wall there, um, the concern was that more moisture going in behind that wall could create pressure. And we didn't know what the winter was going to be like after that really hideous winter of 16, 17. Yeah. So um, you know, the dis we made the decision. My brother-in-law is a builder. Um, and uh, so we took out all the landscaping, covered it with tarps, as you saw today, to prevent more water going in behind that wall. So we can develop a landscaping plan. One thought, and this is, I'll have this conversation with Public Works, is to not put in plants but to cover the ground so that more water doesn't go in behind there because again i don't think it's contributing to aquifer it's just creating potentially creates more problems but if if that's not allowable then we can work on an, another native okay. foliage thank you yeah anything further not for me thank you Uh, my name is Moses Capril. I'm principal engineer with Harrow Kasunich and Associates. I'm available to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions from commissioners for Moses? I have one question, sure. um, and it has to do with the corner where the in the photograph we saw the neighboring um, construction and where it comes and is going to meet. So the picture on the left. Um, represents what's at the neighbors and where it meets with the um, the pile retaining wall at 1816 is slightly off level is there going to be any way to tie that across so you don't get a failure in that corner well if you keep the two systems within five feet of each other it's not necessary to have them in line with each other uh, the arching between the soil, or excuse me, between the piers will still be acting. Uh, so if you have one that's, say, staggered off, you know, down slope a few feet from uh, the adjacent pier, and their spacing is still five feet, the soil's going to have a difficult time arching between the two, or flowing between the two. So um, if they are further than five feet apart, then you can just have one pier stagger towards closer to the pier that's down slope, almost like you would a retaining wall that starts heading in the down slope direction. So the the trick with these things is just to keep the piles close together and the arching capability of the soil does the rest. So uh, these are, uh, what I like about these walls is that they, they're not, you can't see them right away. They're underground. Um, they are basically buried retaining walls based on the arching action of the soil. And eventually the soil will naturally uh, mobilize in front of it uh, in the active zone, what we call, consider the active zone, which is basically the terrace deposits, not the bedrock. And so it can, it can continue, the, uh, the hillside can continue its natural erosion process, which I know is some concern to certain agencies. And uh, when that time comes, uh, the pin piles will become exposed vertically, and you can either, excuse me, you could put some kind of a lagging between them, boards, wood boards, or even uh, shotcrete. Mm -hmm. And so that's, down the down the roadways but uh, and they I've, I heard you guys discussing how could we build this uh, there's many ways to go about constructing pin pile walls in limited access environments we do them all the time on Opal Cliff and on Beach Drive and Kingsbury and Sea Cliff um, if she has enough room you can get in small equipment that could drill to those depths the bedrock is drillable 
and uh, it's, you know, it can be excavated. Um, if they're, for whatever reason, it's just too tight, uh, there are contractors that specialize in coming and hand digging these uh, pin piles. And they can go down 40 feet, you know, they shore it the whole way down. It's all Cal OSHA safe type of an operation. So it's feasible to construct and, you know, they're, they're, uh, they do work. So I think it's a good solution for uh, Ms. Kisseling at this time. Right. Well, thank you. Thank sure. you. And I do note that on the plans, those two corner pilings are five feet apart, so yeah, okay. shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I'm working on the neighbor's property as well. Um, I did the pin pile recommendations for that one, so. So, do they go to the same depth? No. As you're targeting, are they deeper or shallower? Well, they're different slope gradients on the adjacent okay. property. So it was they have a 1810 has a bench down below, and we ran the same type of standard of care. We checked for stability and. Uh, found where we thought there would be future erosion and made sure the pins were seated well below that line. And so for Ben's property or Mr. Strock's property, that line was higher. They had that bench in front. It just has more uh, setback to the face of the slope. So that didn't require to go to the same depth. However, it is the, the bedrock, I think, is a little higher off the top of my head. And so his pins are similarly seated into the bedrock as well. So okay. they're, they're both going to be around for uh, you know good good while yeah okay. well thank you you're welcome yeah. any other questions from commissioners um, just let me ask does any other members of the public wish to address the Commission on this item yeah. Yeah. certainly yes Joy. Yeah. So, um, I, am, I am talking to one builder yeah, I forgot about your concern about how we're gonna build um, obviously anyone who's going to bid on it is looking at the property I've had a couple people out already but I'm talking to one who does do the hand digging so by hook okay. or by crook this is going to be able to be built right okay um, and then yeah I Linda caught that the the Ben's last pier and my first pier are five feet together mm -hmm. and then um, there was one more thing oh my the short answer to your question is my peers are a little deeper than Ben's okay Thank you. That wasn't by accident either. <laughs> when we were, when Ben's wall obviously is in construction now, and we just tried to target it. Let's get it within five feet of the, the neighboring retaining wall, and that way his his property is secured. And okay. just by, she's going to be doing the same thing. Well, it'll continue on down the line. So. Okay. I have one more question, well, if I could. Oh, go ahead, Lindy. Just one more question, um, and it's something that's that's concerned me looking at this because this is such a new property. It's nine years old, I think, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of that. Um, extreme weather we, we have and we expect, but is the type of wall that was used originally, is that the problem or why did it fail so soon? Well, uh, the original wall is what we call a soldier beam tie back wall. Um, unless you run that thing clear down to the bedrock platform, which is, I don't know, 20, 25 feet down, uh, it's always susceptible to becoming undermined. And uh, that's what's beneficial about these pin piles is you're going clear down below the bedrock and you're allowed to have the soil erode out in front of it and this will no longer be an issue. Um, so I, can't, I didn't, wasn't involved in the design of the original structure uh, but I come across them all the time doing coastal engineering and geotechnical engineering in this area. And it's not uncommon to see a soldier beam wall on a bluff top and it get undermined. And typically what we do when we come across those is we uh, have them drop down a couple more boards and run a whaler and some tie backs and just continue the wall down slope. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, you know, and eventually and going from a, what we call a, a cantilever type t uh, soldier pile wall as you keep going down and down and adding tie backs, it becomes a compression wall and it's being held just kind of how you would take a book and hold it against the wall with your finger. You're, you're using the friction of the, of the wall or the slope in that case, and the wall if you're holding a book up, using the friction on the wall to hold the book in place with just a little finger. That's kind of the same way you're, that's the repair at least. So, um, you know, I can't speak to what their design considerations were at that time. You know, if they were targeting, you know, 50 years, we don't want any issues, you know, then I guess you need to take it down to the bedrock, which is not a favorable thing to do with uh, bluff tops these days. 
you know, people don't want to see Shot Creek clear, you know, 30 feet tall. It's just not popular. So they were probably making that consideration and thinking, okay, well, we can get, you know, hopefully 15, 20 years out of this without an event occurring. And when it happens, it'll have to get repaired. And that's okay. S similar with the pin, pol pin piles. You know, eventually they do become exposed and someone's going to have to get in there and, you know, face it. It's just a little maintenance. We should focus a little on the issues that yeah. are before us today. Later, we'll learn how to build walls. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> got off track. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Anything else? Any, I don't believe so. Okay. Okay. Thank you You're for the presentation. Um, seeing no other um, public comments on this matter, I'm going to close the microphone and bring it back up to commissioners for discussion and action. So. This. I'll go first unless somebody else wants to. Go ahead, Ed. So, yeah, I mean, just to focus on the issues that are really our issues here, which are, one, the variance. We've, we've had other variances on this, uh, in this location for the same reason, basically, and this is very trivial. So I think it, it satisfies the requirements for a variance, and I, I don't really see an issue there. As far as the coastal permit, so there's no public access issue here. That's, I'm, I'm trying to think of what the concerns are of our coastal plan here. <laughs> There's no public access issue. I haven't heard anything about any habitat uh, or paleontological issues with this. So the last one is whether or not it has an adverse effect on local shoreline sand supply. And I really tried to get my head around that because I, probably a lot of people here don't know that we lost our beach in the late 60s and it had nothing to do with uh, retaining walls on the river. <laughs> It's all because of the southern drift of the, of the beaches, and so I mean, this is—it's sort of like a no to me. Not it's a non-issue. I, I mean, I don't see how this could affect our significantly affect the sand supply. So I—I I mean, I, I just think it's an easy application to support. Yeah, I, I would uh, concur. I do see how this could be an issue. Now, I, I'm, that's why we trust engineers because it's what they're insured and certified for. But. Uh, at the 101 Grand, where they, I, th I believe they use a similar system, um, we did have that major slide afterwards that now we don't have Esplanade Park anymore. So I could see how this could have an effect, but this, uh, in this um, case, it's, it's not going to affect anybody um, in that way or in a detriment way. So I don't have an issue with it. So I don't have an issue with the, the application itself. I do think that it's important for us to learn when stuff like this happens because the worst thing that we can do is have, you know, new houses that we allow to get built and the next thing, you know, they're falling in the creek. So it did concern me that it's such a new house and that the failure is this big. So I went and, and read almost 450 pages of where this thing started and came through from the original um, review of the retaining walls and the, and the construction and everything trying to figure out if there was some way that we could do something better. Um, and I couldn't find it. I mean, we asked all of the questions. We reviewed all of the information. We did have um, engineers, and it's one of the reasons that I asked Katie. Um, we did condition in the original approvals the implementation of the recommendations in the geotechnical um, report. And I think that we should do that again. I think it's important that it, it not only be the recommendations be adhered to, but that they be inspected and, and that the property owner know that it's being built to the best you know, possible way. When somebody builds a house, and, and I've seen this in Capitola more than other places that I've lived, there's this process going through the government and we, we have checklists and we try and make sure that everybody's doing everything right and they rely on us and their experts but sometimes it's it's difficult to get all of the right experts talking in the same direction so I think we owe it to ourselves to learn from things like this that happen and and move the things forward but this looks as complete as we can get it um, I mean with uh, the engineers and the experts and public works is is you know, doing their job and, and paying attention, I think, you know, we move forward as quickly as we can so you can get get it done with the access. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Um, and I, it, does someone want to make a motion to um, on this item? I'll, 
I'll move approval with the conditions as modified during the earlier discussion. Uh, just maybe to clarify that motion, conditions as modified. Uh, there were two modifications. Conditions concerning the drainage. The first one was that the uh, drainage would be per the uh, Pub public okay. works uh, direction, and the other one was that the uh, inspection or certification would be by the geotechnical engineer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. I would like to add to that that the uh, landscaping plan uh, be submitted for public works approval as well. That's fine. Okay, thank you. All right. I'll we'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, with that, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations and good luck with that project. It looks like a really big one. So. <laughs> Uh, with that, that brings us to the director's report. Um, so uh, very briefly, the uh, library funding, there has been additional um, monies that have been brought forward. So the, the library project will be moving forward. The council reviewed this last week and um, We'll be, I'll bring you any updates in the future of any modifications that will be taken out for cost savings within the library, but at this point they are moving forward with the library project, so. Yay. Yeah. Thank you, good news. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which brings us to commission communications. You need anything from well, commissioners? This might be a good time to say that um, I, I disagree a little bit with uh, Commissioner Smith's view of our role here. I think it, I, I don't think we're qualified to get too deeply into the technical aspects of applications, and we have to pretty much rely on the professionals. So, I mean, I, it, it's a dangerous, I think, direction to go that the Planning Commission will figure out whether what you're doing is really, uh, from an engineering standpoint, no, 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 valid. That, yeah, that's not what I'm implying, but we line the, the experts up and we make sure that they're, they have the right ones. Okay. I'll take that. Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to be an engineer. Okay. I don't want to figure it out. <laughs> I think she, I, I, the way I view it is she was just um, mm -hmm. trying to have us be informed so we can share this information for future applicants. But the applicants so. shouldn't be under the impression right. that we're going to figure out if everything right. is copacetic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, with, with that, you want to have the last word? Well, I just wanted to say, <laughs> I just wanted to say that, you know, with my own experience, when, when we did our remodel, we hired an engineer and the city hired an engineer and then the two engineers duked it out and it's like that's good <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right I'm with sad. that I will adjourn this meeting to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the September capital 6th. of